So up to about the 21 minute mark, we're just getting obliterated by the 500% threat scale in daily raid scenario we set up in episode one. Do also keep in mind, part of the reason why we're struggling so hard is I random all of our colonists in the series, so we don't really have a super optimal lineup. I then remembered a trick you can do to reduce wealth of your base drastically, and this happens around the 21 minute mark. Things do get a bit easier around there, and a timestamp will be in the description as well as I timestamp the part where we go visit the new outpost from the Rim Effect mod. Some pretty nice loot is found there. It's definitely worth checking out. So at the end of the last episode, we got kind of a crazy series of events. So we got a siege in the middle here by the Krogan castaways yet again. And then we got two other raids that went wrong and these raiders are actually trying to escape towards the edge of the map. So I don't think they're really gonna do anything. Plus we got a bulk goods trader down here that's hopefully gonna help us with this siege. And yeah, as you can see, this reptile race of Drell are running for the hills. What's weird about these Drell is they're not a part of any faction. So I don't know what's going on with that whole thing. They are kind of doing work on these guys though a little bit. Okay, we're gonna have to pause the action momentarily as I sent someone out to do a trade with this bulk goods trader who will buy all of our meats. They have a bunch of prefab components for sale. We're gonna buy all those as they're really nice to work with and we wanna move our base soon. But they're definitely gonna help us do that. We'll sell them a little cloth and all these leathers. And these guys have a bunch of steel and plasteel. We're gonna wanna buy all of that so we can use it to help set up our new base. That's gonna cost us quite a bit of silver actually, but they will buy all of this random clothing that we We've been kind of just hoarding but yeah we just got so much clothing to sell and down here we got some helmets some flak gear and then this titanium advanced vest has a value of 2100 gives a ton of protection to the torso neck shoulders i'm not sure if that protection applies to the actual arms though definitely does not apply to the hands and definitely does not apply to the legs or the feet so i don't think that's really worth i'd rather just get a power armor for that value and yeah we're gonna go down here and sell off all these gloves and boots and this sculpture and these guys do have this this Glitter World Hospital Bed, which is part of the Sparkling Worlds mod, and I believe this is just a better hospital bed. Like, I think this 10 quality offsets increased by 10%, and then surgery success, immunity gain, rest, all that stuff is just better than even like a normal, excellent hospital bed would be. It is gonna be a bit expensive, 1878, but I think it's gonna be worth. And yeah, that's the transaction with the trader. So, as far as these guys, it looks like this guy is their RK Mage, I think. Is that. Yeah, that's our Arcane Mage, and he's bleeding really good. He's gonna bleed out in 10 hours. Be good if this guy actually gets taken out. Oh, some incendiaries coming in. He's on fire too, and he's dead. Okay, well that was actually one of the main dudes I was worried about, so I'm really glad he got taken out. The only other caster that I'm super worried about is this enchanter. He can turn people into sheep, and that could be disastrous. And all right, so the siegers were delivered their sieging materials, and we're gonna send in Ling Mei to mess with these guys a little bit. We're gonna just watch out for Chula. That's the main guy. If we see him casting, then, well, we gotta be very afraid. Okay, we're getting pretty far in here. They're not noticing our presence at all, which is absolutely great. Now we'll tactical cloak. We'll move in here a bit closer. Drop a frag grenade on top of their high explosive shells. Those are the only ones we're too worried about. And it did explode, and very nice. What's surprising is that even after that explosion, and some of them already died to the other raiders, these guys are still not charging, but that's fine. They only have these six incendiaries that they're gonna launch at us, but I'm fine with that. And all right, they've got their mortars up, and here come the incendiaries. So I'm not worried about these because even if they direct hit on someone or like hit in our living room, for example, well, this isn't actually our living room. It's kind of like our stockpile room. Though these incendiaries can set stuff on fire, they don't do immediate damage like high explosive shells, or at least they don't do a ton of immediate damage. Explosive shells can literally just like shred people's hands off and stuff, whereas incendiaries are more just like a slow burning process. I also did remove the roof from these rooms so that heat will escape because the other danger of incendiaries is they will cause a room to heat up really quickly. Here comes the next incendiary, not worry about that. I actually do appreciate that incendiary because it's going to start burning up a lot of this tainted clothing that is just doing nothing outside of our base. While they're launching mortars at us, oh, that one actually hit Warcraft 3 Peasant, did no damage to him. I don't even know if he's on fire. And so yeah, as you can see, the incendiaries are nothing to really worry about too much. What I was just about to talk about though was one of our prisoners, Quantor, ended up joining us. I'm actually going to give him over Warcraft 3 Peasant's gear. I don't know why Warcraft 3 Peasant has on a marine armor and a recon helmet. Dude cannot fight at all. Unlike Quantor, who definitely can fight, he's physically adept. And my immediate goal with this guy is I want to turn him into a faceless. Oh, and okay. This is actually going to be very easy. We got a group of friendlies coming in. Some alliance are coming in to help us out. And these guys are pretty beastly. I think they'll probably be able to finish off the rest of these Krogans for us, actually. We'll see who's more powerful. The 17th Alliance Fleet, new Mass Effect faction, or some smelly Krogans. 
And okay, it looks like the 17th Alliance fleet is fleeing. So they really do not help us much here. They have four Medigel that was dropped and it's burning. This guy had four Medigel on him too. And then up here, I'm guessing we have more that's probably burning. Seven Medigel on this person that was, well, it's gonna be going to waste now. Meanwhile, at our base, it looks like the Raiders are not gonna be engaging this traitor. It looks like these factions are not at war with each other. Paderog is using the Psychic Scattergun though and already downed someone with it. This dude has Psychic Shock Extreme. Now, since it's a Psychic weapon, I'm assuming that people that have no Psychic Sensitivity are immune to it, which is gonna be any casters for the most part but yeah warlock is downed i think yeah he's unconscious i should be targeting people that are good with this like this person has a god trait aphrodite's grace oh and they're a tier 2 android raider though so never mind on that this dude proved knack is a technomancer and technomancer is one of the classes that does have increased psychic sensitivity so this thing will work on him we hit him three times with it and we knocked him out this might actually be someone that we'd like to recruit because he's unstoppable which lowers incoming damage by 25 percent can shoot as well this guy would be amazing oh and then kita is trying to be a hero or something i'm not really sure what he's doing exactly it yeah, don't go that way i wanted to send him out to help but not that pathing and here we go they're making it into our main area dude Paderock is doing work though i will say they tossed a molotov at him and i do kind of got a micro him because yeah some of these guys are mean to his gun nice they missed the incendiary very good and are these raiders actually letting them into our base or the traders rather one of the goats just opened the door and they have a way into the base colonist needs treatment kita is injured pretty good he got stabbed with the halberd let's see if this door will close i really hope that's gonna be the case Okay, the door closed. Nice. That actually is going to probably work in our favor because a lot of these guys are going to have to go all the way back around to our main area. Well, assuming this door can hold, Kita is repairing it, I think. And yeah, he repairs really fast. Okay, cool. They gave up on the door. And Paderock over here did get set on fire, which isn't too bad, I think. We're going to have Warcraft 3 Peasant go put him out. And meanwhile, over here, Kita is doing work. We got Ling Mei also doing work on these guys. And they're running. Wow, we actually survived that raid. That was brutal. Especially without the traders helping. Like, I thought for sure those guys would help. And we'll be immediately sending those guys to Rimdeed for not that much. Only 200 a pop, and if we let them heal up, they'd sell for more. So we got only minutes till our next raid, and we got visited by a bioengineering supplier. I don't think this is our daily trader. These guys do have a couple milk beetles, and we can harvest their insectoid milk, and harvest their chitin plates, apparently. Let's grab both of those, and let's actually also grab these mega scarabs. They're really cheap. And then these boom ticks as well can blow up, I'm guessing. They have seven boom ticks and two mega scarabs. We'll probably just end up using these for our next raid. Yeah, here comes the raid. It looks like it went wrong though, which is nice. It didn't go too terribly wrong though. They've already taken care of these cinder lisks really fast actually. They did basically no damage. And yeah, we not only got visited by this bioengineering supplier, but we also got visited by this farming trader, which I thought was gonna be pretty useless as all they have is kind of crappy animals. We could actually grab these donkeys and they could just be kind of a distraction. Before we do consider that though, they do have a bunch of this Prothean plant matter, which is basically just Arcotech plant matter. It's renamed Prothean with the Rim Effect theme mod. But yeah, the stuff does not go bad, offers really good nutrition for five bucks a pop, and I would like to buy all of that. Yeah, we can easily buy 389 of it for 2k. That's going to be our food problems done for for a long time. While we do have a lot of hungry Krogans around that are probably going to chew through that pretty quick, but that's pretty much all I wanted to buy from these guys. So yeah, let's actually just dump the rest of our money on these donkeys. Should we buy the camels too? Might as well, I guess. We could just use them as a distraction. And okay, here come the raiders. So they are sappers, and I was thinking we just have our animals charge them. But yeah, we're going to have our animals just head out and partly the reason why okay the trader is actually leaving part of the reason why i want our animals to distract though is we left all this plant matter out here hostess get off our plant matter we may oh yeah of course you're gonna grab some of it and yeah i think this is gonna be pretty brutal we do have a lot of distractions going out which is good we're just like kita get in there and go ham i don't know what ability that was that okay they just fired a massive aoe on themselves yeah it's really hard to even tell what's going on here I hope our animals are doing a good job of distracting. A few people did get hit already, like Ling Mei got hit. We're gonna have our cloak up. Emu got hit. Yeah, this is kind of rough. We're just gonna try to pull back, I think. Hadarok is just getting nailed. And Emu also got obliterated too. I guess we'll have some people pull back. And crap, Ling Mei just got hit by lightning as she's cloaked. That's really annoying. 
Can we just not be hit while we're stealth, please? Oh, then Quantor is, why is he out here? Dude got obliterated. He's gonna bleed out in 11 hours. Holy freaking balls, Quantor just run, dude. Lee May has one more grenade, she's gonna toss. And then everyone just run. Hopefully Quantor can just get out of there. Emu's down. Dude, the lightning is just, okay, who keeps casting that? They're just spamming lightning. Like, it's like, uh, lightning, get Lee Mei's down. I'm confused as to what that ability is. Like, is it bugged or something? It's not supposed to do that, I'm pretty sure. It's not supposed to just spam. Is it this lightning totem that keeps spamming on us? I think the lightning totems are bugged or something. Like, I don't know. They're not supposed to just be spamming lightning like this, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and they're fleeing, thankfully. Holy crap, the lightning totems, dude. That is ridiculous. They're not even close, too. Like, they're way back here. There's one back here, and there's one back here. What is the range on that? Like, that's gotta be, like, 60 range or something insane. Like, what? Huh? I wonder if that's because of hard mode. No, it's not. Dude, these wildmen are loving this. They're, like, free food. What is that? So Quantor got absolutely owned. He's gonna bleed out in three hours. He's got moderate blood loss, but with just one Medigel, he's good. He does still have moderate blood loss, but yeah. So now that we have a person that can do the animal skill, Paderock, one of our Krogans, has 16. Somebody also noted it in the last episode, there was a bug where it said he was incapable of doing animals, and that was related to his childhood. Normally, if someone's incapable of doing something like he can't cook or clean, the work type is just disabled, and there's nothing you can do with it. The reason why I thought this was a bug was because when Paderock joined us, before we gave him the skill trainers, he had 11 in animals with a minor passion for it. How did he get up to 11 animals if he's never done anything related to the animal skill? And yeah, he couldn't do anything. Like, he couldn't even milk cows or anything like that so yeah that didn't make sense to me and i had to go in the game files and edit his backstory he still can't do cooking or planting but he can tame animals and we have two wild men casters that are wandering around our map we did just tame one and we sold them off for around 6k plus we sold off one of the tribals that we captured a blood mage for somewhere between 5 to 6k earlier as well before we talk about what we're going to do with our 14.2k silver we got a krogan raid coming a bit early and they are unfortunately sappers i don't know why we're only getting krogan raids by the way Way. We do have a Krogan in our prisoner cell, and then we also recruited a Krogan. I'm not sure if either of those has something to do with it, but yeah, we're sending in our boom ticks, kind of distract, so RIP those things. And then to the east over here, we have five thrombos that enter our territory. We're gonna have key to try to piss them off. He is trigger happy, so he shoots this material rifle really quick. If we fire a spray of LMG at these thrombos, it should hit something. There we go. Two of them revenged, not the entire herd though, unfortunately. Key to run in time. Please keep it. Stop reloading. Just run. You idiot. Moron. Run. Holy crap. He's not getting hit. Run. Dude, you're so fast. Okay. I was not expecting that 4.6 second cooldown on the N7 LMG. But yeah, Kita's going to run. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah, they had to walk over to that sandstone chunk too. But yeah, that's a whole thing. Oh, and this thrombo is actually preventing this guy from tunneling into our base momentarily, which is nice of it. And then this thrombo's aggro on these guys, but yeah, it's not gonna matter, I think, too much. I wanted the whole herd to Manhunter, but yeah, so we got Lee Me out here, who's about to piss off these thrombos. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, we pissed that one off. With this one, this one's pissed off too. And this one's gonna be pissed off. Okay, now tactical cloak, very nice. And do not run a gun, just let them run by. Very good. Okay, well that series of events worked out, thankfully. I'm getting to the point in this playthrough though, where like if things don't change and like we don't stop getting raided by these Krogans just nonstop, then it's gonna be pretty much over, I think. Cause we have no time to rebuild or do anything before our next Krogan raid. Like it's just Krogan raid after Krogan raid after Krogan raid. And even the raids that aren't Krogan raids, like I think it was this one, the Turian militants are half Krogans. Like we could actually use this opportunity to send out Paderock with the Prothean Psychic Scattergun. Maybe we can knock some of these guys out. We don't really need to knock out the better ones. We just need to knock out any of them. Yeah, this guy's getting lit up. Oh, and these guys are fleeing after we knock that guy out. Oh, and this guy's pretty good. He's tough. Coordinate also increases global work speed. Dude can't really do a whole lot. I'm like, no, I'm not going to go in his backstory and change it around. If a work type it says it's disabled, then okay, fine. It's disabled. But yeah, I would actually really like to knock this guy out. Don't want to knock the thrumbo out necessarily. This guy went berserk. I want to knock him out though, not make him go berserk. Psychic shock, extreme. There we go. I think he's knocked out. Yeah, he's unconscious. So that was the only really decent Krogan we were able to knock out. We did a Paderock chase the rest of them 
down and we knocked out as many as we could and the idea here with these guys is we want to release them and every time we do capture one of them and release them we'll get some positive relation with these guys and I want to become neutral with the Krogan castaways again because yeah they just keep raiding us and the Krogan raids are just nasty. We ended up taming the other caster wildman on our map who was a chronomancer and this guy sold off for 6.4k and we've had this faceless Vorka Gok in our prisoner cell for quite a while he's down to zero resist but his recruitment chance is extremely low because of his recruitment difficulty. I think there was like a 7 or 8% chance each time we talk to him to recruit him and even though he is a faceless class which I think does have the potential to be one of the best classes in the game. I've never actually used it to its full potential but I want to try it out. His other traits really blow. We'd only be recruiting him to teach our other colonists how to become faceless mainly Quantor who is physically adept. That all being said I think we're just going to sell the guy off for 3.3k as we're going to need the money and I just found out about a pretty big exploit you can do with Rim Deed. So we could sell off Vorbrun the tough coordinated Krogan that we just picked up for it was like 400 and we can buy him back for 1100. The dude had a lot of resist too and a pretty low recruitment chance so yeah that would be really OP if we could do that. Basically you just wound someone a lot so their market value just drops really low. Sell them off to Rimdeed for really low and then buy them back for really low. Even though Rimdeed does double slave price it doesn't matter because their value is so low because they're wounded. That is definitely a huge exploit of the mod. You should not be able to buy people back I think. That all being said we will recruit the guy the old fashioned way and yeah he has a 3.7% recruitment chance. Being that he is tough though and coordinated he is going to be worth it I think. Oh and here comes our siege. Yet again this is not the daily siege though it's on day 14.98 so we're getting two events basically in one. And okay maybe I was wrong on that one. I think that's our only event because our trader came and no other raid came. This trader has a bunch of animals and you guys know what we're going to do with these animals. It's probably one of the better traders actually because it's a bulk goods trader and not only do they have those animals for sale they'll buy all of this meat and then yeah we butchered up the thrombos. We got a bunch of thrombo fur, Krogan leather. We've been butchering up the raiders. Oh and here we go. These guys will buy the bones. Nobody has wanted to buy these bones yet. They've just been sitting around the base but yeah that's a lot of money right there. Plus yep they're going to buy all of this gear. Finally, someone will mop up our map for us. We've been waiting for someone to come in with their giant vacuum and just suck everything up. And they have a Psychic Insane Lance. Let's just grab that low shield pack. Might as well. And okay, I've got a way that we can cheese this raid. So first things first, we're setting in Ling Mei to get as close as we can. And okay, we're getting within the range. We'll tattoo a cloak like right now. And okay, now that she's invisible, First thing we're going to do is use this Psychic Insanity Lance on this tier 4 android who does have a engineered power armor on. Do note that tier 4 androids do have built-in tankiness, 50% armor, plus their body parts are much tankier than normal humans. So yeah, that dude's going to be causing some havoc. Unfortunately, we forgot Li Mei's amazing pistol, so we're just going to have her use the Gauss rifle. And okay, they're assaulting the colony, that's all we needed them to do, and we're just going to run. That dude is holding up a massive fight. They grenaded themselves and the mortars are on fire. How are those high explosive shells not blowing up? Meanwhile, in the northwest corner of our map, we have these giant mushrooms and I kind of messed up by having the animals path through this area. Basically, I set an area down here and then I set an area over here and these raiders hopefully are going to chase these donkeys through. Yeah, they're chasing them through this mushroom forest area. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to send them into it. I put an area like right here. Oh, and they sheeped the animals not ideal they can't actually move properly but yeah these guys are taking damage over time they're getting toxic buildup by being in this why am i poisoned why am i toxic jungle and they're taking cut damage and stuff this was just a random event we got a while ago and i didn't really know what to do with this but we could have actually made some type of maze around it and this donkey got up so they're coming back for it donkey's coming in clutch oh and they sheeped it yeah, these guys are all taking more damage, which is great. Wood actually got knocked out as well. Very nice. And alrighty, here comes the raiders. So there's a couple of these guys. Okay, Paddock, take your shield build off. Mainly we want to knock out Celia. She has a god trait, Ares Wrath. So we're going to use the scatter gun on her. Okay, you're missing shots, but that's okay. Keep missing shots. Celia is good cover, I guess, behind these chunks. We want to pull back a little bit. You just need to hit Celia a few more times. Quincy, the robot's going out. That's fine. I don't care about Quincy. Maybe I didn't have to have him go out like that, but oh well. Celia should be going down soon, I think. Paderock, come on, dude. There we go. Celia went berserk. We don't want Celia to go berserk, though. We want Celia to just get knocked out. Oh, there we go. We knocked her out. Okay, that's good. I also sent out Ling Mei to 
Holly dropped the shield, so we're gonna have to go inside the shield to, whoa, they broke through. That's not good. That's actually kind of good. It's okay, we can just pull back into the base. Um, oh, incendiary or grenade launcher or something. Is there any more people out here, by the way? So Lin Mei's cloak is not gonna last for that much longer. Oh, I'm not sure what we do here. I'm hearing some weird sound effects also, which is kind of freaking me out. Cannot be a good thing though. I don't know what that sound effect was. It sounded like a... Oh, this person got turned into a wraith. I think that's what that constant sound effect is, is the wraith. I don't know what is going on with that. But yeah, we got Ling Mei on the outside. What I'm thinking here is we just hold out. And we got Hollis coming in over here. He's gonna try to mess with Ling Mei. Hopefully she can own him. He's just got a crappy musket. Like it's really crappy. Maybe get cover. Nice, she killed him. I think we have Ling Mei just dip. And I think once these guys are done with these animals over here, they might aggro on Ling Mei. And she just has two hours left until her tactical cloak is up. And since these guys are just normal raiders, I'm thinking she can kite. Oh, and these guys are gonna kidnap who they can and leave. That's perfect. No one really all that important is down. Just Quincy over here. Who else is down? Yeah, it's just him. And I was gonna get rid of Quincy anyways. He was a crappy tier one robot that had like 11 melee. So that was good about him. See, so yeah, the Raiders are pretty much gone. Like we got these guys picking through the mountain for, I don't know why they're doing that. They could literally just walk out of here. But yeah, we captured that amazing Ares Wrath colonist. And there's a few other people that we can capture as well. And okay, wow, speaking of amazing colonists, I just noticed that Cadman is unconscious outside. Dude's gonna bleed out soon. He only has two hours left. And he actually has a mind twist in his brain. So he has no psychic sensitivity. We could not use a psychic scattergun on him. But look at this dude's traits. He's Herculean, one of the three main godfighter traits. And the dude can fight and he's got bloodlust. This would be an amazing colonist again that we could also potentially recruit. They are human is the only thing. So it's like... Can they really stack up against the might of the Krogans? I guess we're going to find out because, yeah, we're going to save this guy for sure. Holy... Good lord. Please don't drop it right on Lee Mei's head. Okay, well she's not hurt at least. The unfortunate part about that whole thing is this is our mass orc bed that they just dropped on. We'll have this door held open. Okay, cloak the heck up. She cloaked. The raid went wrong too. <laughs> what a ridiculous raid, dude. I'm sitting here trying to like micro Ling Mei, trying to get her a nice setup for her rest because she's sleepy. I decided, you know what? She's going to have a nice rest for the next. Well, I guess we were actually going to get raided. I wasn't paying attention to the raid timer. But maybe she could have rested a little bit while the raiders bombarded us on this beautiful, wonderful mass work bed. I'm okay with it though because yeah, the raid went wrong and these guys are very injured from their crashed drop pod raid. And whoa, this dude, what? What is this person's stats? It's the first time this entire playthrough I've seen Artemis's blessing. And this person also is a faceless caster. And I've been talking just nonstop about faceless. What are the chances of that? And they come just hand delivered to us on a silver platter. She's knocked out and she's not even bleeding. Like, could this be more perfect? This person, Dresnus, is also a caster too. They're a paladin. I'm not sure if we want to recruit them. But yeah, Grenaria is going to be absolutely amazing. Artemis's blessing lowers Amy time by 100%. She's a natural genius at shooting, so she learns it quicker and she's just going to learn it over time. And then Faceless, I believe, can do ranged combat pretty well. And like they're pretty cannibal, like those are great traits as well. As far as her race being Drell, I think they have the same HP as normal colonists. Leg has 30, yeah. They're a reptile race that is resistant to high temperatures. I guess that's all they get. But yeah, so you may notice this raid is actually really small compared to our other raids. Partly that's due to the fact that it's a drop pod raid. When it's a weird event like this like a drop pod raid the strength is lowered but the main reason why the raid is so small is because our wealth just took a nosedive down to 136k from 225k we were at 233 at our last raid the reason for that is we loaded up all of our valuable materials all of our silver any extra armor that was lying around well inside of our base there's a lot of crap that's still lying around outside of our base we loaded everything we could up on a caravan with warcraft 3 peasant kita and emu so mainly kita is not going to be here for this fight 
but it's looking like it's not gonna matter too much. Like Ling Mei might be able to solo this. We're gonna have Paderock come out with the Scatter Gun. And the Scatter Gun actually will not work on Sismius because he's a Geomancer. He actually only has 13 rounds left with the Scatter Gun too, so this can be a little bit rough. This person, Camelus, is actually tough, so it would be good to use the Scatter Gun on him. And let's see how Ling Mei is gonna deal with these guys. I mean, she is cloaked right now, technically. Okay, who are you shooting at? I think they were just winding up a shot at Ling Mei. Yeah, they're done shooting at her now. We're gonna have Ling Mei try to take out Sismius. Okay, just shoot him, I guess. Like, that's fine. We're pretty much point blank shooting him. Oh, they're trying to destroy the bed. Are they gonna destroy the masterwork bed too? Yeah, Julius is trying to destroy it. I left this door open so they could just leave, but well, then Quantor is trying to dip. Okay, Quantor, pull out your charge SMG. Start blasting this guy. Since Julius is trying to destroy our bed, we're gonna use the Psychic Insanity Lance on him. I do not want that masterwork bed to get destroyed. We got a quest. There's an old beacon near our base and it's guarded by some tribes people. Let's actually just accept that. We're obviously not gonna worry about it right now. We have more important things to worry about, like taking out Sismius. He needs like one or two more hits. There we go, he's dead. And Quantor, go get some cover, I guess. Li Mei is about to have her cloak run out too pretty soon. Countless just got knocked out, which is great. And Paderock only has two shots left with this scatter gun. Thankfully, Mario, our social guy, actually has this Alliance Assault Rifle in here. I don't even know why he has that. He's just been not doing any fighting at all, but we're gonna put the shield ball on and just dip to the south. Oh, and he has smoke too. We can pop some smoke in Padrox in the radius of the smoke, so it's going to be helping. This person has an EMP launcher, Brute Bus, so that's going to do nothing. So use our last two scattergun shots on Flory, Florokidia. And up here, Quantor's dipping, Ling Mei, just run. We don't want to be hitting Julius, Ling Mei. Hit this person, because Julius is going berserk. Let's start hitting this guy now. Oh, and then Quantor just got some... Whoa, both of his legs are destroyed. He had one leg destroyed. I was going to talk about that, but the dude can't move anymore. Dude, it's not easy to destroy Krogan legs. Like, come on. How unlucky is that? I don't know. Either way, we're going to have Ling Mei just chill, I think. Pretty sure her cloak's going to run out momentarily. And then, yeah. Brute Bus is trying... Yeah, Ling Mei's cloak is out. Brute Bus is trying to EMP launcher, but it's doing nothing. Because Padrock is not a... Oh, here we go, they're running. Paderock did take a good amount of damage, but that's fine. So while that whole raid was going down, our caravan has been slowly moving to the northwest. While well, our main caravan has, we split off Kida, who moves extremely fast. Right now, he's actually only moving at 28.8 tiles per day because he's heading into this cold bog, which happens to be this rogue Vi site that's going to expire in 1.5 days. Also, for some reason, the quest we just got spawned right next to this quest site. I've never seen that before. I don't know why it spawned right next to this quest site. I will say I've never seen either of these quests, and I think they might both be from the Rim Effect mod. And while I say I've never seen these quests before this playthrough, I did actually do a test run on this rogue Vi site to make sure it was worth to even send a caravan out here. I have no idea what's at this guarded Prothean beacon though. And alright, so the layout is slightly different from when I did my test run and do keep in mind I'm not usually going to do test runs on these type of things, but this playthrough is kind of hanging by a thread. And I did want to see what this event was all about, like if we need to bring a lot of manpower or not. And it turns out we just need Kita for this. So if you guys remember in a previous episode, we picked up this Orion Corp defense shield which has 100% shield recharge rate per second and 100% shield max energy. So these mass accelerator turrets can burn through the shield if we are not careful. But we're going to come over here and disconnect this power line. I guess we'll just destroy the solar generator. I guess the power conduit destroying that would be quicker probably. And okay, they broke through the hazard operations shield. Yeah, they fully broke through it, but they haven't actually touched the Orion Corp defense shield. We just have not gotten hit yet, really. So there's a bunch of these mechs here, and actually there's not that many big ones. So last time I did this, there was like four Wymere mechs, the big boy ones, but none of them have any ammo in their guns, and they're not that hostile. That might be an issue with the AO's combat, and like if I didn't have my ammo mod, they might actually have ammo, but it would make sense if they didn't have ammo, because basically the premise here is that one of these people, Selfos, who was a part of this raid, I guess, came Came across a small installation run by a rogue virtual intelligence and a large number of turrets and mechs went completely haywire so like a scenario where these mechs dumped all their ammo on these guys could make sense but yeah so this is actually going to be a fairly easy quest and okay i'm just going to show my shield hp we almost okay they broke the shield there and actually it's not recharging so we're going to dip i think 
uh, yeah, I wasn't this aggressive, I think, in my test run. Uh, we got hit as we were heading in there. Not bad, though. We can actually start claiming this stuff. We'll just deconstruct that. We can claim the buildings, like the solar generator, which actually is not going to do anything. We have to disconnect it from the turrets up here, which should be fairly easy, actually. Once the shield regenerates, which, yeah, it does take a while, actually. Once it's broken, it does take a while to regenerate, so it's actually not as broken as it would seem. And it might not even be as good as, like, a normal shield belt. I don't remember normal shield belts having this long of a recharge. His main shield is not regening too. So I guess with all shields, there's just a timer where like if it's broken, then you just got to wait out the timer. Okay, it's actually taking forever. We're going to deconstruct that. Kita got hit again, but then his shield belt regen. We're just going to deconstruct this and he's going to be able to do that really fast, I'm guessing. Well, pretty fast. And okay, that should de disconnect all these turrets. All the ones up here. Yeah, they're all disconnected. There's still two turrets left up down here to the south. And they're connected to this battery, which we cannot claim and deconstruct. I don't actually want to destroy these turrets because we can pick them up if we don't destroy them. So we're going to have Kita come down here, try to melee this power conduit while tanking both these turrets, I guess. He does have a medigel, so I wouldn't actually mind it if he got hit. Okay, they're not able to break through his shield by the looks of it. Okay, we broke the power conduit. They shouldn't be connected to power still. Well, maybe this turret's connected directly to the battery, which I don't want to destroy the battery. Like, we might just have to let it run out of power. But then that begs the question, like, what is this turret connected to? If this one's connected directly to the battery, maybe there's a battery inside here. What's this in there? It's like some green. Oh, there's some batteries in here. We can claim them too. Cool. Claim them and uninstall them. Well, since we have some batteries now, I don't actually mind destroying the other battery. Oh, and this turret's out of power. What was in this room though? Just a table? I was seeing some green stuff. Maybe I'm just seeing things. Where are these mechs going by the way? Are they leaving? Okay, I don't know what the mechs are doing down here. It doesn't really matter though. They're really slow. So we don't have to worry about the mechs. I mean, I guess we'll have Kita just come down here and melee this battery, which that might not be the best idea. Hopefully we can melee it to the point where it's going to explode and then he can run. Never mind. And the turret's out of battery. All right. So now all we got to do is just melee the mech charging beacons. I don't believe there's any way to steal these mechs, unfortunately. I did a test where, like, I let them all run out of power. But if that does happen, they will just go back to their charging stations. If somehow they were able to power off, though, if we just waited long enough, then we could recruit these things. So maybe I'll do a little test here. And yeah, okay, I did some testing and basically disconnected all their charging stations from any source of power. And like you can see, the Wymere charging station needs 2400 watts of power, has none on the grid, but has been stuck at 0.62% power for a couple days now. I also tried walling a mech in so that it couldn't get back to its charging station, but it's just been sitting here for, I want to say, like a full day. And also do note, if we try to get near these mechs, like they will attack. They won't chase us, but they will fight, so they're still up. And so yeah, I reloaded the game before we did all those tests. And basically, we're just going to have to destroy all these charging stations. Three advanced components plus 20 plasteel, 23 steel, and four prefabs. I think the Wymere mech charging stations do give more, as do the Wymere mechs themselves, from what I remember. These mechs are not happy about this. But they move so slowly, which, yeah, it would make sense that they're upset about us destroying their charging stations because once we destroy these charging stations, the mech itself gets destroyed. There is also this person, Selfos, here who did send us the quest, and we can rescue her. She's not especially good, though, so I think we're just gonna leave her. All right, before we leave this place, we built a machining table and we're gonna shred all these mechs. So we got a ton of advanced components for that big boy mech. I think we got five from the small ones. Yeah, we're getting five from the small ones. I think it was 11 for the big ones. A ton of prefab components as well, some plasteel. So after destroying all the mech charging stations and disassembling them all, we got 73 advanced components. So those things are not cheap to make, I guess. We also got just one component, 114 prefab components, a lot of steel, tons of plasteel, 652 of it, a lot of spacer ammo. And then we got guns for days, which like we're probably just gonna end up selling all these for the most part. I mean, there's an excellent alliance pistol here, so that's nice. We're also able to grab just four of the mass accelerator turrets. I thought there was more. Well, the one thing I almost forgot to do was disassemble dead androids. I didn't actually see what tier of android this was, but hey, there's three more components. And I guess those were both tier one. Um, this is a tier 3 android though. Yeah, a bunch of components for that. And here's another tier 3. Okay, that's it. But yeah, that was definitely worth. Meanwhile, back at our main base, we got kind of a mess going on in our living room area. We just haven't had time to clean it up. And we're also in the process of moving these prisoners into a safer area. But yeah, in our prisoner cell, Mahariel is currently trying to recruit Provnak. The unstoppable negative 25% incoming damage. Technomancer class, Krogan, who can shoot. And yeah, he was at zero resist because we've been using Word of Trust on him. I think we use it twice. We're now also going to use it on Celia, the human who had Ares Wrath and... 
This is probably gonna get her resist down to zero. Yeah, that got her resist down to zero. There is only a 66% recruitment chance because there's a psychic drone female here, which is lowering her mood by 22. And she also slept in heat, I guess. But yeah, we're gonna try to recruit Prubnak and then we're gonna try to recruit her before we get our next raid, which is coming soon. It's coming actually in 0.1 days. So it'd be really nice to have some extra help here. Recruit failed, 33% chance. And yeah, speaking of resist, Granaria, the Jarell who had Artemis's blessing in Faceless, she has a 2.3% recruitment chance. It's actually worse than that other dude. I think it's because her mood's so bad too though. Maybe if we got her like her own prisoner cell. Oh, very nice, Celia joined us. Okay, cool. She should definitely be able to help out here in the next raid. Oh wow, we got a Prestesis Trader as we're getting sieged by some Rebians. So this should be really easy to deal with actually. But yeah, I sent Mahario out to check out this Prestesis Trader and they have a ton of stuff. A Cyber Leg, which lowers incoming damage by 10%, 130% efficient. We need that desperately for one of our Krogans who has both his legs shot off. And they have an advanced bionic one too. So we can actually get the dude two legs from this thing. They also have an advanced bionic eye, which gives plus 100% sight. It's 200% efficient. I think anyone that's using that eye is pretty much going to be landing all their shots. But yeah, I think the reason why we got sieged by such a small force was because our wealth was down to 122k. And I had Paderock drag Quantor out of our base. When we did get raided, Paderock was outside the base, so we only had four people inside of it. And maybe there's just quite a big difference between a four and five colonist raid. It's that or these Revians are worth quite a few points and Krogans are not worth enough points. Because yeah, if you think about it, if these were all Krogans, this would be much more terrifying. I think Krogans maybe just need to be worth more points but yeah so these revians are doing their thing where like they build the mortars and their whole siege camp but they don't bring any shells with them i don't actually think we have to do anything if they do run out of meals i think they will charge and alrighty so in quite the process we were able to get most of our silver back it's actually not even all of our silver we are freaking rich right now but yeah we're gonna grab some glitter world maybe some regular medicine too so as far as the implants we picked up there was a few luxury implants i was considering but i decided to only go for the ones that we needed which was mainly just two bionic legs for one of our krogan that was missing both their legs and there's a few glitter tech implants like this glitter tech advanced bionic eye that are just so good that it's hard to pass them up yeah it has a value of around 3500 but that 100 increased sight plus the 200 efficiency is insane i'm not sure how the math on that works out with that 100 increased sight but i feel like it's like three eyes in one eye or something i don't know okay so we made it to day 18 which by the way i just realized it's been six days if i was doing these episodes like the other two i would just end it here you can see here on day 17 before we brought all of our silver back into our base our wealth was down to 122 k then we brought all the silver back and we bought those prosthetics it jumped up to 191k and then we left again with everything and it dipped back down to 126k now do keep in mind we only have four colonists in our base and here's the siege we're getting it's perfect because it's literally right on top of this revian siege i'm pretty sure that these solarians i guess they are are just gonna own these revians like i think revians have a really high point value for their level of gear and stuff they spawn in with they are really good in melee uh, for the most part but they all have soul reap one or two which actually ends up lowering their movement and manipulation i think some should have like even like soul reap four or five maybe even higher i don't know wait the solarians are losing this they're fleeing before the Revians. I think the Revians actually will not flee no matter what. But yeah, our daily raid got taken care of. And with our daily raid, we get a daily trader. Today, we got a textiles trader. And they will buy all this random leather we have. Plus, we have quite a bit of industrial ammo on our map. I had Ling Mei pick up like 500 of it. And we're just going to sell the rest of it. The main reason why I did it that way is because it's just scattered everywhere. And these guys are a textiles trader. I'm not sure why they're buying ammo. But yeah, we're going to sell them all this random clothing that we're not using. We got plenty more of that came from. But they would actually sell us these gems of arcane insight they have four of them and i'm not sure why they have these being a textiles trader but essentially with these you can give someone the magically gifted trait and you can turn them into a caster we can buy one of them and we have all of our silver on a caravan right now if we send it home immediately well we have 12 hours to make it back home i don't know if we'd have enough time and we actually just picked up a bunch of silver from that transaction we can buy one more so if we want to get those last two gems we'd have to send like Kita home he's definitely our best bet if we just give him 7,000 silver he can actually 
make it back in 0.1 days. He's moving in 110 tiles per day. I think once he gets on the road, it's going to be quicker. Yeah, 148 tiles per day on the road. And all right, we split off three people from our caravan along with some materials. And the goal here is to make a makeshift hospital room that we can safely do a surgery in on Quantor. I didn't want to do this back at base because there's so much wealth here that would be adding to our base. And speaking of which, Kita actually made it back home with a 7k silver and we're able to buy these other two gems. Plus this unstoppable Technomancer Prubnak did end up joining us as well. I think we're actually going to get him and Kita out of there because yeah, his market value is 13k and it's going to be fine once we get him geared up. But right now he has got no gear and I have no idea what we're going to do with him. And all right, so we made the makeshift prisoner cell. It's actually slightly dirty for some reason. Mark out three peasant get in here and clean this room. So we are doing surgeries on Quantor and it looks like the first one was successful. Now has an advanced bionic leg in his left leg. And okay, it looks like we missed the surgeries, but they were successful. We were doing them on this Glitter World hospital bed, which had a 129% surgery success chance. With that, we're going to grab his eyeball, uninstall the bed, pick it up, and these dudes are going to carry this fat Krogan out of here. For our day 19 raid, we got raided when we had 112k wealth. It was by a pretty small raid, this Vorka raid, and they were tunneling into... I think they did all this tunneling, actually, and they eventually just gave up. The next day's raid was the same exact thing. We had about 20k more wealth, and we had a few more colonists back at base, so it's fatter. But it's a sap raid by Vorkins, and I think they're actually coming in. Yeah, they're actually finally coming in. They're going to sapper through this ship, and we're trying to get Mahariel out there. And he did manage to make it out, which is really good, because not only will these guys buy all this crap that's just lying around our map, and even more garbage down here... And yeah, we had a lot of garbage, including this Prothean Mask Summer Hat that one of our prisoners was wearing. For a Summer Hat, I guess this gives a lot of armor, but yeah, it's not that good. 1600 though for that. And these guys do have a Recon Excellent Power Armor, which is really nice. It increases movement speed by quite a bit, carrying capacity, global work speed, and gives a decent amount of armor. The Recon Armors, I think, give less than some other Power Armors, because they're more for like scouts. It does give a lot still though, because it is excellent. And the shield's actually not that fat, only 29% for an excellent one. Still a really good Power Armor though. So we're going to pick that up. These guys also have a bunch of rocket launchers, five Orion rocket launchers, which I think are just more accurate than normal ones. Cause I think the damage of a normal rocket launcher is 50, but it says it's much more accurate than standard ones. We're going to buy all those Orion rocket launchers as well as both these doomsdays. So I don't really know if I want to show too much of this raid. It was just a cluster. The main problem with sap raids is they'll just tunnel in wherever. So you have to have defenses pretty much on every side of your base. And we just don't right now. I was actually planning on leaving this base. There was just like one or two more things I wanted to get done. But yeah, we don't really have a good embrasure system set up in the front of our base, so everyone was just kind of fighting without cover. On day 21, we dumped a bunch of wealth out of our colony, mainly any colonists that were really expensive that weren't being used to their full potential. And we got a situation that's not only a bit weird, but it's also fairly unfortunate. We're only getting raided by one person, Rybolt, who is a part of the Orion installation. It's pretty much the same raid that we got on day one. They have an Orion exoskeleton. And it's really unfortunate that we don't have our scatter gun ready to knock this person out so we can steal this thing from her. She isn't especially good. Like, she has a gun nut, which is good, but we wouldn't really want to recruit her. We mainly just want to steal that Orion exoskeleton, so we're going to have Ling Mei cloak up, and we're going to be using our new colonist. Rob Wait, what? What are you shooting? Oh, we killed her. That was probably a mistake to use the excellent pistol, and she brought us another one, too. This MRG pistol is really good. That's what Ling Mei's been abusing, and here we go. The final prisoner that we've been waiting to recruit has a 4.3% recruitment chance. Once we recruit this person, no freaking way. We actually <laughs> got her. I think it was like an 8% chance or something. Her mood was not great. A without table, she was hungry, and we were just in the process of making her her own bedroom. Like, we just brought all the beds out of the room, so it was gonna go up a bit. But yeah, the fact that she joined us is quite awesome. We're now having a majority of our colonists, anyone that's got a pretty decent market value, we loaded them all up on a caravan, and we're gonna go do some trading. But I think we'll actually do that in the next episode. We got 21k silver to blow, as well as 208 components and 79 advanced components. I would like to save the advanced components, because we we can make turrets out of them but we don't have the tech yet for that so i don't know it's going to kind of depend on like what we can trade for and actually before we end this episode i hit up flint from the asara union they didn't really have anything but then the second colony stonkly this industrial colony they had this combat style sniper and this is one of the items i was actually looking for we can teach our physically adept guy how to become a sniper and i think along the way on our travels we're going to look for four arcane tomes so we could turn four people into casters i'm not really sure what we're going to be looking for but yeah also there was this quest that was next to the Rogue Vi site that we never checked out. While we're out doing trading, we'll hit up that spot in the next episode. And yeah, with that, I want to thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.